with a wingspan of seven and a half feet across and standing five feet tall, the whooping crane is one of North America's most majestic birds. Unfortunately, it's also one of the rarest. At one point, due to unregulated hunting and habitat loss, only 21 whooping cranes survived in the wild. But today, they number in the hundreds. They, along with crane species across the globe, are enduring thanks to the efforts of one man, George Archibald. What attracted me about whooping cranes happened when I was eight years old and there was a special program about the whooping crane. It was a dramatization about a pair of whooping cranes who were then terrified that humans had discovered where they nested. And ever since then, I've been fascinated by those birds and eventually I was able to devote my life to helping them. Go ahead. Well, this spring I worked with her from April 1st until May 20th, about 15 hours a day. She only responds to the human presence, in particular to my presence. They're monogamous birds, so I'm her mate, so to speak. Cranes are precocial birds, and when they're very young, they fix or learn to associate with the moving object in their early environment. Right. And this spring, on June 1st, we hatched the first chick ever produced from Tex. Well, that's uh, When George Archibald and Ron Sowie graduated from Cornell University with degrees in ornithology, there were no manuals on how to raise cranes. Undaunted, in 1973, they turned a horse farm in Baraboo, Wisconsin, into a center for crane research, captive breeding, and education. At the International Crane Foundation, George and his team learned how to hatch and care for chicks, how to disguise workers in crane costumes to avoid human imprinting, and how to fly ultralight aircraft in order to lead young cranes on their migration route from Wisconsin to Florida. Today, some crane populations remain in a perilous state. This has taken George to some of the world's most volatile regions to plead these birds' case, including parts of Afghanistan and the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea. George, uh, early on in our relationship, explained to me about how important the DMZ was as a uh, as wintering habitat for two species of endangered Asian cranes. And I got enthusiastic about it too, and hopefully we'll be able to have the DMZ protected in some way, so it will be a haven for cranes in the future. Cranes transcend political boundaries. The North Koreans and the South Koreans want to work together to help the red-crowned cranes, the Indians and the Pakistanis, the Saras cranes, and on and on. Everybody has been receptive to helping the cranes. There's so much that George does that you don't see. The reflection of his uh, achievement and the achievements of ICF and the support that Audubon has given that effort for so long brings into focus the world of the crane as it impacts on a broader environmental perspective. What I always think about when I think about George, I think how one man starting 40 years ago at an old borrowed farmhouse in Warrabua, Wisconsin, one man has made a most significant difference on worldwide environmental awareness.